I think it's safe to say that RuneScape has an aging audience and that we need new players introduced to this game to keep it alive in the long term. However, a lot of players that start RuneScape quit in the early stages. Why is that and how can we stop that? Let's talk about it. Yo, what's going on guys? My name's Chevelric and today we're going to be talking about Endgame Syndrome in RuneScape, what it is and how we can make sure that new players are introduced to this game so it stays alive. Because let's be honest, we're all in our 20s now. I can see it in my views as well, like in my viewers that everyone is literally above 18. We're aging and with age comes less time because we have more responsibilities. How much that suck. Even though we'll still be playing, we still need new players introduced to this game. If you've been around this channel for a long time now, you know that I made a similar video in the past regarding this topic. However, I feel like I can do a way better job now, so I'm going to be trying that in this video. So some of it might sound familiar, but some of it is also a lot of new stuff and is, is definitely inspired by the comments that I saw on my previous video when I talked about this mindset regarding experience rates in RuneScape will actually be bad for RuneScape and the comments that I got on that video regarding it. But we'll talk about that in this video. If you're going to enjoy it, Definitely give it a like. Join in with the discussion in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're new. We're still trying to get as close to 2k subscribers as humanly possible by the end of the year. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So, first things first. What is Endgame Syndrome? A lot of people seem to think when it gets brought up, because it's it's recently been popularized the term by Josh Rife Hayes. I will put his link in the description. He's an amazing YouTuber. He talks about all sorts of MMOs, but he uses RuneScape as an example a lot because he loves the game. And he plays the game. And... He kind of introduced the term to the wider audience. It, it's been around for like 15 years, actually. Like, I'll put an article that really explains it into like real detail. Obviously, I will be explaining it, don't worry, in the description if you're really, really interested in it. But that article is 15 years old. And it still holds up today. And it was relevant then, and it's even more relevant now, which is insane. But a lot of people seem to think that it is something like, oh yeah, the game gets good at endgame, that is endgame syndrome. Or endgame players are the only ones that play the game, that's endgame syndrome. Or endgame players only know better. That has nothing to do with endgame syndrome. What endgame syndrome actually is, is the fact that people don't finish their games anymore. And within the years, the amount of people that are finishing the games are actually decreasing. And I mean, technically, obviously, you cannot finish RuneScape, but it's still very important because that concept really, really applies to RuneScape. But obviously not the only reason why people are finishing games is RuneScape's complexity. There are multiple reasons. Obviously, things like not enough free time, um, wanting to play with friends and friends not being into the game, so they won't be playing the game. Like, let's say all your friends like Call of Duty and you're the only one that likes the type of games like RuneScape. Would you rather play with your friends on Call of Duty or would you play RuneScape? I mean, a lot of people would obviously love to play with their friends. Same with things like switching to hot new games. A lot of people will just hop games like everything that's hype out right now, whether that's Among Us or Fall Guys or, Fa or Fortnite, they will hop to that game. And RuneScape is not really an easy game to hop to or from because you need to put in so much time and do you want to sacrifice all the time you put in for a hot new game? So there could also be a reason to not be interested in RuneScape. But the most important thing is that RuneScape doesn't do a good job at introducing new players to the game and obviously when you start a game you do not have any skills in the game obviously certain games are designed to be inherently difficult like all the dark souls games the whole ip is difficulty that's the whole idea and the concept behind the games however runescape is not necessarily designed to be difficult but it's difficult due to the complexity and everything that's into the game and that brings me into the whole point of this video. We need new players to be introduced. And if new players are not finishing a game or even just quitting the game early on, then that is actually an issue. And why I know that this is an issue with RuneScape is when the RuneScape mobile was released, they changed the tutorial within the game. And they talked about it on stream and they said something around the lines of we want to make sure that people do this tutorial and understand the game and be able to play the game. However, even though RuneScape Mobile did introduce a lot of new players to RuneScape, it didn't have the impact that they probably would have loved it to have because of the complexity. And I will have some examples later for this as well, but 
there are people that just get confused with this game because the complexity and as soon as the activity path ends or when it starts to become really repetitive, they don't know what to do. And as I said earlier in this video, this brings me into something that was said in my previous video and that really applies to something the developers are saying as well is... Well, RuneScape is just not that type of game, right? RuneScape is a sandbox MMO, you spawn into the world, and that is it. People will be just exploring and going on their merry way, just like how we did when we started in the early 2000s. But let's go back to those early 2000s, because I feel like a lot of players that play RuneScape 3, at least the majority, have been playing for at least over 10 to 15 years. Let's go back to those early 2000s and think back to the games you had and how many free full-fledged games there were that are as big as RuneScape or let's take a more modern example like Genshin Impact. If you never played it, it's a fully-fledged game that has like full stories that has a gacha mechanic which is buying characters but it's a full-fledged game with a world that's probably bigger than RuneScape at this point that you can just play for free. Fully for free. Yes. And think about back to 2005 or at least that's when I started. Oh, I started in 2006. Never mind. I had Pokemon Emerald, I had like a Crash Bandicoot game on the DS, I, or sorry, on the PS1, and I had RuneScape. Those were really the only games that I played, and maybe some racing games as well, but that was the only things, those were the only things that I had. So if you were stuck within the game, you either had a choice to restart the game or play one of your other few games. The difference now is there's so many excellent and amazing games out there that are very enjoyable and fun to play so why would you struggle on a game like runescape to really understand it and to learn it when you can just switch over to the next best thing and that is things that happen and why i know this is because i'm going to give you an example and i know this is a bit of a narrative example like an anecdotal example and not necessarily factual as in like there's been research done on it but my cousin, who is 11 years old, switches from game to game to game. And he probably has never finished a single game in his life. And my uncle asked me about it. Why is that? Do you finish games? I was like, I usually finish all my games. He's like, so why doesn't he do it? And I was like, he has too much choice, I think. So at one of his birthdays, I talked to the uh, dad of his best friend, who's the same age. And I was like, so does your son finish the games? And he was like, actually... I wanted to ask you about it because he was talking to my uncle about it that he talked to me about it but so that that of that friend of my cousin talked to multiple parents about this because he was like do I need to stop buying my kid games do I need to lock him into stopping games because he is afraid that his kid not finishing games will transfer over to other things in life that is not really important but he pretty much talked to like multiple parents i think he said like five or six so in this case we have an example of eight different parents that were all saying that the kids were not finishing games and that they were all kind of just playing different games all the time all the time and just never really returned to the other games and why this is important, why I'm bringing this up, is because that is the, the generation you eventually want to tap into as a game as RuneScape. Obviously, right now, if you think about 12-year-olds playing this game, that doesn't really appeal to it. And obviously, I know there are other issues with RuneScape with, like, how the game actually functions. It's a point-and-click game. But besides that, RuneScape is, besides that, a really interesting game, but it just has some things that need to be improved on it. Like, the graphics would be really nice, and also some gameplay features, because... Even if they play it on like a touchscreen, they still would have to be introduced to it better. But this is really important because this is the generation that you want to tap into. The TikTok generation or however you want to call it. The short attention span generation. How do you tap into those as a RuneScape, as RuneScape that is really a long term type of game? I feel like you need to ease them into the game a little bit better. And what I mean by that, and this is at least in my opinion, the solution, is that we need to hold people's hands through the early game and the free to play thing with an ultimate goal in mind. Right now, it's just you do all these tasks and that's really it. There's not really a goal. I feel like there needs to be a storyline within free to play or, free or early game, whatever you want to call it, that leads you to one big goal and i feel like a perfect goal for that would be the king black dragon you would have to do quests level up your skills and it would kind of like guide you through this path like see it as like quest in other games add it into runescape in a way where it will connect quest skilling and all other activities that 
would lead you to King Black Dragon into like one big activity path instead of how it is now is gather 10 copper. Do this. Do this quest. Do this. And there's not really a goal. And if you hype up this King Black Dragon at the end of the game, kind of, so at the end of free to play, and lead people to it and explain to them, oh, you need to do Dragon Slayer because it will teach you how to slay a dragon. And then you could do King Black Dragon and make this it an epic fight and make sure it kind of maybe scales or something. Make it so it's actually somewhat of a slightly difficult fight. And in the process, teach them about combat, teach them about abilities, teach them about how quests work, teach them about bosses and why people kill the bosses. Because sure, you could kill a boss and get loot from it, which a lot of people understand. But Teach them about how people are trying to get these collection logs because it's status. And teach them maybe even about niche things like clue scrolls. Like give them a clue scroll drop and guide them kind of through it and be like, hey, this is also a piece of content. And by doing so and guiding them through it and holding their hand through that early game, you will show them what RuneScape is about. And then let's hope they understand how it works in members. And it would be great if there's just a feature where you'd be like, Oh, I feel lost. And you can click on it and be like, hey, what do I need to do now? I feel like old school RuneScape is working on a system like that. And I feel like RuneScape 3 needs to look into that as well, where you can kind of just really randomly generate tasks that are fitting towards your account, where it's like, hey, we suggest you do Priest in Peril, or we suggest you do King's Ransom, or whatever quest or activity RuneScape would recommend you doing, which also, if you think about it from a RuneScape perspective, could also push players to some more dead content if it's interesting enough. Like, for example, be like, oh, maybe you need to do pest control, and if you push enough people to pest control, it might actually be alive again, even though I don't see why it would do it. But it is really important to step away from the idea that yeah, this is just how RuneScape is, so we need to keep it that way. Look, if we want this game to last on the long term, we need to get the TikTok generation into RuneScape. And I'm not saying we need to fundamentally change RuneScape, but we need to just change the introduction to RuneScape to make sure that these people will also be enjoying this game. As I said earlier, and I alluded to earlier, I also talked to some of my viewers. Look, I streamed Pokemon before I streamed RuneScape, and my viewers were a bit younger. They were around the age of 15, 16. When I got into RuneScape, some of them were still watching me as tried the game, which they really did enjoy. They were like, oh, it looked really boring. But when you really get into it, it's so interesting. It's so immersive. It's so, it feels like such an experience and such a journey. And these were like vastly different people, by the way. Some of them only played shooters. Some of them only played adventure games. Like they all came together and they were all like, yo, this is so cool. But then the issues started to arise with, Hey, I did the activity path, it's kind of getting repetitive. What else can I do in the game? And how do I progress my account? How do I get where you are? What do you do in the game? Why do you keep on doing this? Why do you do this? Because it's never explained. And I know it's an MMORPG, and you could argue that people, other people should explain to this, but a lot of people cannot be asked. Like, why would you go out of the way to find someone who can possibly explain the game to you? When you can just play another game that is also fun and that will explain to you how to play the game. And that is just something RuneScape needs to realize and needs to lean into, at least in my opinion. Look, I could talk about this for hours up on end, but I don't want to bore you guys for literally an hour long video. I really hope you guys did enjoy this. Join in with this discussion in the comment section down below. I'm really curious to see what you think on this topic. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new. And my name is Javelric, and I'll see you guys in my next video.